You are listening to the Kingdom Masterclass Podcast, where business and the anointing flow together to build God's kingdom. To stay connected, visit podcast.z5info.com. This is what this is all about. This is about being faithful in the natural so you can have the supernatural results. If you are not faithful in the natural, you are, cannot be expecting the supernatural to come in your life. You know, people are always praying for money, but if you're not faithful in the natural, you're not going to be able to be blessed supernaturally. You know, you're not going to be blessed supernaturally, you know. And so this is about, this is about being, part, being part of God's kingdom, and this is about advancing God's kingdom. This is about always putting God first, and that's what actually motivates you and encourages you to go, you know, go and fulfill the Great Commission. And we're doing it through the job. Imagine if Anderson woke up that day, you know, and he was just all, you know, all discouraged, and he decided to stay his car, or he was not faithful to knock every door, he would have skipped that door. And then there was, would have been wheat now, and then a response might have not come. There's many lives that depend on you doing your job properly. There's many lives that depend on you doing your job properly because God puts you in a field and that's for you to get the harvest. So if you don't learn that connection, you're always going to, you're not going to be able to live seven days a week for, uh, you know, 365 days a year, living in God's perfect will and God's perfect plan for your life. You have to see how the whole thing comes together, how faithfulness, it is actually going to impact every place where you are at. That's why you need to be disciplined. If discipline, spiritual discipline would have not been in the play, in the game where Anderson was there, then, you know, he would have skipped the door. He would have, or he would have not been on fire to actually be available for the Holy Ghost to speak to him because he would have quenched the Holy Ghost because he was having a bad day and he was having a bad attitude and he would have bad confessions. So a lot of the time is not only going doing the job, but doing the job with the right heart. And that's what's going to give you overwhelming results. We have to get down to what the practical looks like so we can get the supernatural blessing in our life. Because the supernatural does not work until you implement it in the natural. And in our line of work is being faithful, is going out there, is being yield to the Holy Ghost to be to find yourself approved in the industry that we're in today. You need to be trained properly. You need to, you know, you need to work all the hours. You need to be, you know, accountable for the time that you're putting out there. So there is no difference that, you know, there is no difference between just praying every day and working every day. Praying and working goes hand in hand. Always. Praying and working is always going to go hand in hand. That's what makes it, that what, that's what makes a company successful. That's what makes a business successful. That's what makes a job successful. And so we have many testimonies, but we we have to begin to be really focused on how we are doing. You have to acknowledge what are the steps that you're taking on a daily basis, so you're not swinging the bat with your eyes closed. You got to know where the ball is coming from. You got to you got to know where you're positioning yourself to hit the ball. There is a science, there is a method of things and the method of having God's blessing in in your life is following the word of God activated by the power of the Holy Ghost. This does not happen by coincidence. I feel like Christians or people in the world are always believing for these big things, thinking that there is a magical way that they'll happen where God has already set up a way for you to walk that is full of his presence, full of his knowledge, full of his empowerment for you to do what he called you to do. So I believe that we are are the the example to many many companies to come on how you're actually use the ability the God-given ability to create wealth to reach the lost at any cost 
you will know what it looks like to use the business realm to evangelize. But if you are not create, if you're not, if, if you're not exploding the ability, if you're not acknowledging the ability, the God-given ability that He is giving you to create the wealth, which is knowledge, wisdom, insight, knowledge, wisdom, insight. There is something that involves the, the empowerment to create the ability, the ability to create the wealth. There is something that is within the ability. The ability is going to be wisdom, knowledge, and insight. In any business, if you have, if you're going to create a business, if you're going to go into a new venture, you will be successful a hundred times more than anybody that is just going winging it with their eyes closed. But if you have somebody that has the insight, then all of a sudden you're right there. You're next to the blessing. Because then you have somebody in, you know, in the insight that is feeding you information. The word of God is like that. You have the insight. You have access to heaven. And you can come boldly before his throne with thanksgiving, knowing that he will give you the insight of what you need to do in the place that you stand today. So this is immediately correlated in everything. If you are going to start a business, you're going to go to the person that has done business for 20, 30, 50 years. And so God's blessing has been set up and written down over 2,000 years ago of how he is going to bless you, how he is going to make things happen in your life. And so we need to make the spiritual practical in order to have supernatural breakthrough and to have the wealth of the wicked being laid for the just you we we work in this way and so you begin to really see that there is a godly pattern for what he has called you to do there is a godly pattern of what he has called you to do and I want to read this really quick um, I'm sure you have everybody has their bible on their phone you know it's Ephesians 2:10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, created in Christ's image, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking the path which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he pre and rearranged and made ready for us who lived. God has already predestined a path of success for the solar for the solar industry, for every industry, he already predetermined a path for his children to walk in. So you need to know that now that he already predestined the path for you to live a supernatural blessed life, it is it is immediately related to the fact that he already laid down a way for you. And the way for you, it's directly to his word. It's within accountability. It is where your empowerment com comes from. Is where your accountability comes from. Is where your character comes from. And that has to be directly connected to God godly principles and that's what begins to take a person to another level like you hear never give up never give up never give up never give up that's what you hear over and over again and that's the truth that people know if you don't give up you're actually going to get somewhere the only time that you fail is when you not whenever you're doing things not whenever you're trying is whenever you actually stop doing what you're doing and then you begin to blame others for you not having the success that you're looking for because at the end of the day, you need to take responsibility for everything that is happening in your life. Nobody else has the authority in your life. God already gave you the authority for you to live a blessed life. God gave you on the authority to, for you to live a blessed life. And so, and so whenever we are talking about business, whenever we're talking about directly, you know, what we're, what we're doing today is, is you now 
since God already laid a path, one thing that you need to have clear in your mind is that God already laid a path for you to walk on. Right. So the path is already laid down for you. So everybody, everybody at the sound of my voice knows that God has already laid down a good path for you. The end, the job that you're in today. That's the number one thing that you need to know. You know, it says God already, you know, we're his own handiwork. He made us. And now here it speaks of being his handiwork. You know, when you build something, you build it to actually, you know, be all terrain or you build something to actually withstand the elements or the road where you're going to make it travel. Right. So be of courage. He already made you, strengthens you to work to walk on the path that he already put before you. So you should be confident, confident 100% that whatever is in front of you, God already made you to be able to conquer it. God already made you to conquer the learning cur curve of solar. God already made you to conquer, to be, have the mind to be a better representative than any other solar company. God already prepared your mind and your heart to live a good life. You just need to believe it, tap into it, and act like it. That's God already, because when you are God's workmanship, when he already made you, he made us already capable to create a foundation, a teaching, a, a, a flow where the reps are going to come in and they're going to be empowered with knowledge about the industry where we're in. And he already empowered us to be better than anybody else. Not because we're better than anybody else, it's because we're willing to walk in the path that he already lay down for us that's what that's what makes a difference that's what makes the difference because he already empowered you he already made you so there is no failure in you there is no failure in you because God already set up a path and he already make you to be a more than a conqueror he already made you to be more than a conqueror. He already made you. He already gave you the ability to do two sales in a week, three sales in a week, five sales in a week. It's a matter whether you believe it or not, and it's a matter of whether you want to prepare yourself or not. It's, 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 it's that simple. It's that simple. You know, we, we, we haven't prices raised, you know. Apple is not worried about it. They already know that they're going to continue to sell their cell phones at the price that they're already predestined. You know, we have a lot of examples, you know. We, you know, when we used to go and sell alarm systems, we would come to the house and increase the, give somebody a new bill. Based on what? Based on creating value. We need to learn how to create value. We need to create how to not only create value, but separate ourselves from the 99% of the companies out there. So people think by praying and by you just hoping is it that you're actually going to get all this, all, this, all this knowledge. You don't get it by praying and hoping. You get it by studying and applying yourself. That's a, that's a, that's a big, big difference in everything that we're doing. I mean, we have an 18-year-old where, you know, where sales seems like our, you know, are adjusting because of the pricing. We have an 18-year-old that believes, that applies, that been listened to it to make two sales last week. That's an 18-year-old. What's the difference? Was it the price? No, it was not the price because the price went up. What was the difference? The turf? No, because everybody's in a turf. The difference is the belief. The belief in the action, in the preparation. Believe the action in the preparation. If you don't have belief, if you don't have action, and you don't prepare yourself, you're always going to be hoping for this supernatural blessing that it is not going to come. If you don't believe, if you don't act, and if you don't prepare yourself, you will not receive the supernatural blessing that God has for you. 
I'm telling you right now, this is what makes the difference between people that have been here for two to three years and for people that are actually going to be successful. This is going to be a great year for the righteous. This is going to be a great year for the righteous. It's going to be a really bad year for the wicked, but it'll be an amazing year for the righteous. And when you become righteous is when you actually prepare yourself, when you believe and when you act on it. You could not be righteous without an action. You cannot be righteous without a daily action that it is directly connected to the word of God. Directly, every action, everything done outside of faith, it's always going to be sin because it's going to be based on your own strength. And God has not given you a spirit of fear. He has given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. That's, what, that's how he has prepared you ahead of the path that you're walking today. So you are empowered today to walk in that perfect path of good works because he made you, he crafted you to be able to be capable, to be ready for the end time transfer of wealth. Now it is your time to apply yourself. You need to apply yourself. You need to apply yourself. You need to prove your, you need to study to prove yourself. You need to study. You need to put the work because you are already blessed. You, you know, a lot of people are scared of finding knowledge. You know? Because they want to just live blindly, live blindly. Look, be, living by faith is not, 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 not just being stupid. Living by faith doesn't mean living like being stupid, not knowing. Actually, faith will show you the right actions to take. That's wisdom. Faith will show you what are the right actions to take so you can take the, over the land that God has promised you. So we can take over the industries that God has promised you. You don't have to live blinded anymore because he has laid down a path and he already made you to be more than a conqueror and he already gave you the faith and the empowerment and the principles to be able to go take over now what is left to do for the body of christ is put in the work that's what is left to do to the body of Christ. You have to put in the practical work. If you want to have an end time, end time transfer of wealth, you better know where is it going to be deposited. You better know how you're going to be, how you're going to multiply and empower as many people with all that wealth that is going to come through. If not, you're just praying empty prayers, hoping that be, of your lack of work will give you something. It's not going to give you anything. You know, that's why there are successful people in industries and there are mediocre people in industries. Who are you? Who are you? He already made you a winner, but you have to make the steps to prepare yourself to win. The fact that he called you a winner, that doesn't mean that you just sit in a chair and you don't do anything. And that you're thinking, well, my season is over. Your season is going to be over every, every other year. Because you fail to understand, you fail to receive the wisdom. You fail to receive the wisdom and the empowerment of how things are going to work now. That means you have to humble yourself one more time. And so if you're not, I mean, if you're not taking time to study, but, you know, I don't know, I just, you know, maybe I don't have a passion to do that. You're not going to have a passion to do anything. And, you know, people are like, you know why people are so excited to go find something new? Because that's all it excites me, because that's all they know. All they know is to be excited about something new. That's all they know. They th and they think that excitement is the answer. 
Excitement will just derail you, and it's going to be like a shooting star. Excitement is just like a shooting star. That's what people use to be like, oh, the Lord doesn't have me yet. I'm just excited for something new. They're just excited that the grass is greener everywhere else. Where the grass is, winter, <clears throat> is, is greener, where you water it. That's where it is. So people are excited to be thinking about, oh, the new things, the new things. You're You'll be excited for a season. That's why you see a lot of people even coming here. They're like at the beginning, they're selling, 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 and then they're not anymore. Because they fail to know what is the steps after excitement that they need to do, which they need to study to prove, to prove themselves. They need to apply themselves. They need to be hard workers. You need to be excited about learning. That's what you need to be happy about because you'll never stop. That's never going to go down. You need to be excited about learning the word of God, learning his kingdom and how to apply it. You'll never run out of being excited about it. You're going to be happy always because now you're putting your eyes on something that is ever growing. If you're not ever growing, nothing else will be ever growing. So you need to be excited about finding how things are done and how you can become great at it so you can teach others. Then your excitement is not going to run out. Because now you're actively understanding how heaven works, how heaven thinks, how heaven looks like. And, and now you'll understand how the kingdom of heaven is. That's why you have, if the prices go up, you are excited about learning how to overcome that objection. Because you become a man that is always overcoming and always having victory. If you become a studier of being an overcomer, you will have a victorious and a glorious life. Always, always. This is the mentality that needs to be renewed in the body of Christ. You need to be excited and thankful and focused on the things that are never going to stop. But if you're thinking that, okay, a new opportunity, a new job, a new little business, and you fail to understand what actually is going to carry you all the way, you're going to be in the same place every two years, every three years, because the gas is going to run out. But Whoever stops evolving dies. Whoever stops adapting dies. That's it. You know, and that's in the word of God. He takes you from victory to victory. He takes you from glory to glory. The good work that he started in you, he will finish. That means that the work is not done yet. That means that the work will be perfected on the day that we, face, we meet Jesus. That's when the work will be perfected in your life. So, we got to now be focused on the growing and in the learning on how we're going to edge out everybody else in this industry. And that's the focus that we have. Because now we know that the most important thing is being done, which is people taken out of darkness into light. We have many people that now we will have true currency in heaven, which is relationships that we were able to take to heaven, harvest that we were able to take to heaven. Now we need to multiply and work on the, on the vehicle that God has given us. The vehicle that God has given us. You, if you have a vehicle that is going in and out to save people, you want to make that vehicle faster. You want to be that vehicle better. You want that vehicle to fly at a certain point so you can go faster. That's what we must do now with what has been handed into our hands, this company. You know, you know that this vehicle now is rescuing people from the harshest places that is saving lives. So now, and that on its own, you should be thinking, man, how are we going to get better? If I don't get excited about that, how in the world am I going to get excited about my little, my little puppy thing that I have going around? I mean, what is three, four, five grand? You have to, you really have to, you really have to focus on the right things. You have to focus on the right things so you can have the greatest puppy business you ever have. Not put your faith in those two, three puppies that you're going to sell. So, you know, you have to learn where you put your faith. You have to renew your mind so you can be an active member of God's kingdom, right? You know now 
where our mentality, where our heart is. And that's why I'm very excited by the, you know, uh, the closest retreat. I think this is going to be the most, you know, educational, educational, empowering, encouraging, uh, you know, closest retreat that we've ever had. Because now we're making our vehicle better because we know that it does the job. We know now that God has given us something that it is up to us that we can put, you know, jet engines on it and we can go as far as we can. We can put some Tesla motors and go to moon and come back. Maybe we'll just put some Nova motors and we'll go back and forth, you know. <laughs> this is really how this is going to work. This is how the body of Christ is going to get the end time transfer of wealth. It's not going to be by you doing your little old thing and he's having a hard time thinking that you're submitted, or that you're not submitted, but you're not submitted and thinking that maybe there is something better that God has called you to do. My friend, you don't know what you're talking about. You have to know that there is a higher God that has a perfect plan that he already laid it down for you and that he already crafted you to his own image. He already crafted you to his own image. So therefore he made you powerful. He made you powerful. He made you to be able to conquer Always, he made you the head and not the head, the tail. He made you above and not beneath. Everywhere you go, you are blessed. Everywhere you go, you're blessed. Everywhere, every step you take, it is blessed because he has made you to be more than an overcomer, but you cannot have a blinded faith. Blinded faith is not understanding what's the step, the work that you need to do. That, you know, Blinded, if you're walking down a, a hill and you're blind, you're definitely going to kill yourself. Having a, 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 you know, blinded faith, you know, people think like faith is like, okay, I just don't want to see what's going on. Of course, you're taking the step of faith. But as you take the step of faith, God's going to tell you what to do. When you take a step of faith, God's going to tell you what to do to not stay broke, to not stay bound, to not stay in the same year, not to repeat the same year that you always repeat it. God is always going to give you a way, a, a better way. God's always going to make your crooked path straight. But the great thing about faith, the step of faith, is that follows work. And the work, it is directed by the Lord so you can have the outcome of what he promised you. But God is not going to tell you to have faith and not give you instructions of what you need to do. The step of faith might sound crazy, but then when you make it, then he's going to begin to give you the steps of what to do. That's exactly what happened with the company with me. Do not hire anybody from all, any other solar companies. My goodness, I was only, I only knew how to build teams taking it from another teams. That's all I knew how to do. So I said, okay, that's out the window. So I took a step of faith. Okay, Lord, I'm going to build teams again. Whenever I thought I'll never build teams again. But now I'm going to do it your way. He said, great. Now you're going to not hire anybody from any other solar company. Wow. That's a direction of faith, right? So what did I have to do? I still had to recruit, but not look where he told me not to look. So that's direction of faith. Right. I took a step of faith and I said, yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. What nobody wants to do. And it makes no sense because there is a lot of people that want to come work. But the Lord told me, do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. And, I, and it's been faithful for the exactly six years now. You know, God wanted to have a pure DNA of what we're doing and raising our people that could carry the vision the, and the vision not to be compromised. Now we have strong men and women of God that carry the vision that will be unshaken. Unshaken. We have tremendous couples working with us. We have great leadership. And guess what? They didn't come from other solar companies. They actually came from everywhere else. And we were able to give them the message. And the message now remains pure. Now the message has a foundation. Now it will not be shaken. 
God knew better what we needed to do. So I took a step of faith. But then after I take a step of faith, there is direction, direction that happens. Like Moses, if he didn't strike the ground, the sea would have not parted. Now, it took faith to step in front of that thing and say, man, this thing got to open up, you know. But God is always going to give you an action after he gives you a direction. When he gives you a direction, it follows with an action. When he gives you a direction, he follows. Might be be in peace, don't do anything. Might be go and talk to them. Might be go pray. Might be go fast. Might be don't, don't sign up today, sign up tomorrow. That's actually what defines faith whenever it doesn't necessarily make sense in your mind. An action that doesn't necessarily make sense in your mind, but it checks in your spirit. And it checks in your spirit according to what? To the word of God. That's how you remain. That's how you remain founded and you remain in good doctrine. That's how you're not just thinking that, you know, you're praying and, you know, everything is so angels and feathers and gold flying around. What is that going to do for anybody? The only thing, you know, gold dust coming down here is for me to pick it, pick it up and go sell it at the nearest pawn shop and get some money. Or send it so you can go make me a ring. I don't see any other application of gold, gold dust. No, I really don't. What is it, you know? What, are, you know, feathers, maybe, so you can, you know, some people sell it to people that make dream catchers things, whatever, you know, which that's not a good thing either. You don't have to, you know, look, the power and the presence of God, of the Holy Ghost, it is so powerful in its own that does the greatest miracles, transform lives like this. It changes what men cannot change. It heals what men cannot heal. It gives a vision that a man cannot give. It restores what men cannot restore. That's what the anointing that we have in our life. It gives you the ability to build things that other men cannot. So that's what this is all about. And that's why we focus on really the ability to create wealth and being good stewards. Wow, because we know that we carry an anointing, you know. I was on Sunday at a church. Uh, on Sunday, we went to a service. We went to visit uh, uh, Teddy uh, Jr. and Teddy Sr. You know, it was at seven o'clock at night. Great service, great service. One of the things that one of the things that really impacted me what that Ted Sr. Uh, did, which he's pretty much a legend. You know, that that man is, is a man of God. You know, he's preaching at his seventy at his seventies stronger than he was preaching at his thirties. Now, that's what living a godly life does to you. He preserves your body and your strength like an eagle, like a bull. When you live a godly life, the man doesn't look a day over 55 or 60, and he's almost already in his 70s. So that's what a godly life makes you look like. He makes your youth. He renews your strength. He makes you look younger you know like pastor adonica and pastor rodney you know they went to south africa they thought they would be like this old people but because they begin to use be a use of god at a young age they've accomplished what many have not accomplished in 10 lifetimes and so that's what living a godly life does to you he preserves your body he preserves your mind and he preserves everything to make you function at your best even even when you're 90 years old i mean you see kenny copeland out there Kenneth Copeland is out there, his late 80s, I would say. And, and the man is going. So one of the things that really, you know, impacted me is he said that, you know, a lot of the times you want to do big things for God. How many of you want to do big things for God? How many of you want to do big, big, big things for God, right? And then how many of you could say that you don't have enough money to do the big things that you want to do? If you don't raise up your hand, you'd lie here because you would be doing like a, a lot more if you had a lot more money. Or maybe you don't have it because you just blow it up on yourself and then that'll be the end of it. But he said, man, I always come to this realization. I always come to this wall. The, the big things I want to do for God, I don't have money to do. And he said that he went into a fasting and a prayer. He went into a fasting and a prayer. 
And then he spent time. And then after three days or something like that, he hears the Lord. And he says, Teddy, what's more important, souls or finances? And then he says, Lord, souls. He doesn't hear anything else. He goes another day praying, another day praying. And he says, Teddy, what's more important, souls or money? And he said, Lord, it's, it's souls. He doesn't say anything. He goes another time praying, another day. And by the third time that the Lord asked him, Teddy, what's important, souls or money? He said, man, my goodness. I'm like, Lord, it is souls. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. And he said, what's greater? That's what, it, that's what the Lord asked him. What is greater, souls or money? Souls are greater. What is more important? Souls is greater. And he said, now, let me tell you something. If you don't have, if souls are greater and money are the least, if you don't have faith for the least, you will not be able to do the greater. And that's where 99% of the people are today. They want to have all this faith for the greater thing, but they don't have a faith for the least. And to To go and get as many souls as God has called you to do, you have to have faith for the least, which is the finances. You have, to, you have to do the natural. You have to work. You have to be led by faith. You have to take an action, an educated action by heaven, an educated action with inside of heaven, an educated action with wisdom from heaven, with an understanding of heaven. That's what you need to make the choices by. And we need to stop living a fairy tale of why you have not sold the last week and why you make one sale one week and you don't make the other a sale another week. If we don't directly correlate this too, you'll never know what God has for you. He said, Teddy, if you don't have faith for the least, how would you have faith for the greater? And then God answered him, he never lacked for money ever again after that. Because he began to apply himself on the least things. If you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammoth, how could you be faithful with the greatest treasures of heaven? And this is where the body of Christ is today. That's why we don't own big corporations. That's why we don't own a chain of gas stations. That's why a Christian does not own Wawa, where Tesla have put every single of the charging stations. It valued them to over a billion dollars immediately. That's why Christians don't own that because it's because there is no anointing and putting an agreement together. There is no anointing to put more money together. There is no anointing to go build a contract together to go speak with the people with the right principles because God has given us the ability to do that. That is what the ability that he has given us so we can begin to establish his kingdom. You're not using the God-given ability to establish the kingdom. You're just sitting there praying, hoping that the job is the problem, that the manager is the problem, that the church is the problem. My friend, you don't know what the word of God says. He said that he has given you the ability to create wealth, to establish his kingdom. And everybody is focused on establishing the kingdom, but nobody wants to use their God-given ability to take over the land. I was talking with a friend of mine. He's a big evangelist and, you know, goes all over Africa. And this is what he said to me. He said to me, Miguel, he said, look, we have a big plan of over a billion souls for Jesus. And so, you know, I said, okay. He said, well, but what you speak You know, in our realm, in our, our arena, nobody's speaking about. We have a big goal, goal of a billion souls, but nobody's talking about how we're going to get the billion dollars to go do it. And, and, and the religious mind would be like, the Lord will provide. No, the Lord already gave you the ability to go create the wealth to go get the souls. Do not be prideful. Do not have a reproof mind. God already has given you the ability to create the wealth that, and to do what he called you to do. He already gave you the ability to do it. And so he was like, nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about this, Miguel. Nobody's talking about this. And that's why he said, you know, oh, you know we're going to put a big crusade together. 
and, and we're going to put a big crusade together in Germany. Now, this, 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 you know, denomination, or I don't know what you call it. Is it a denomination or you call it like a group of people? What do you call it? I don't even know. It's, a, well, it's an organization. This organization puts probably the biggest events on earth when it comes about evangelism. And that's a fact. But now there has to be, that's the two streams coming together, the anointing and the finances coming together. That's what's happening now, right? Because this thing needs to speed up. And all we need to do is wake up the body of Christ and telling them that there is a way for them to win, that they be made to win. They're already there is a way for you to walk in in victory and that you already were made victorious and that you already had the empowerment to go take over in anything you walk in. And now you begin to teach the body of Christ that to get the harvest, you're going to have to do those. You're going to have to know these things and you're going to have to begin to understand things that you didn't before. Because if you already understood everything that heaven had for you, you already would have what heaven promised you. you which is exceedingly abundantly more than you can think of or imagine. We say it all the time, but I don't just want you to say it. I want you to live it. I want you to really live it. And this is why this is so important, the, what, the work of God through business. Because business is now another hand or another finger that is reaching out people from the world. And that's why God is activating people into business. That's why God is activating, you know, ministry in business. Because we can reach, I mean, we have Daykill, we have, you know, Frank. I mean, we have, we, now we have so many stories of people that come to the world. We got, we got Jacob, we got Joseph, we got Anderson. I mean, we now begin to have a lot more fruit that actually don't, just don't come from churches. Actually, people are actually coming from the world. Isn't that amazing? That now we're really having, we're not having a big info, uh, you know, a big, you know, migration from people that work that are already in church coming to the job. But we're having a big migration of actually people that were in the world coming to the job, coming into the kingdom. Evan, everybody, you know, we have so many examples, so, so, so many examples. And I'm telling you, that's what God is going to find us faithful with. You know, they, we're, we're, we are the size that we are today. And like this, we're going to be the 10,000 that God said we would be. That's exactly. That's what he said. And the reason why we're not closed there yet is because we're not preparing ourselves. But well, we are preparing ourselves with it. We're putting the work on it and we're going to go do it. We're not blaming anything on anybody. We're not saying the church. We're not saying the managers. We're saying we are taking responsibility to take this vehicle where God said it could go. Because the way is already made, we're already in power, we already have insight, knowledge, and wisdom from heaven, so we're going to go do it. We already have the power of the Holy Ghost, the same power, the resurrected Christ from the dead, lives in you, lives in me, and it quickens our mortal body to do supernatural things. It quickens your, mor your mortal mind to be able to do the businesses that you could never thought you could do. It quickens your understanding. It quickens your strength. It quickens everything. It quickens everything that it's embodied in your body. It quickens everything. Your eyes, your throat. That's why people get healed in their eyes, in their stomach. That's why, because you're quickened by the power of God. And when God's power takes over yourself, then you could do great and mighty things for God. That's when you do it. And so, you know, my friend, he said, Miguel, nobody's talking about this. So I'm doing a crusade in Germany. And we're going to put, bring many, 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 many people. And we did a kingdom business last year, but it really didn't really hit off. And I really feel that the Lord, you know, wants you to go. And again, it's not about me going to places. I only do what I feel and I have confirmation for the Holy Ghost to do. I don't do anything else. I'm not interested to be in, in any platform. I speak to you guys every Tuesday, and that's important enough for me. You know, I'm not really looking for anything else. I know God has a plan. I mean, the reason why I'm doing everything that I'm doing is so I can focus on the developing of people, on the souls of people. And why we're preparing so many couples is so we can focus on the developing, on the growing, on the pastoring, on the empowerment of people. 
That's why, because that's the currency of heaven, his souls, his people. That's what God is after at the end of the day. He empowered you to create wealth for the people. He gave you wisdom for the people. So you could be saved and many can be saved after you. He gave you unlimited so you can go get unlimited people. When God told you go save people, he didn't tell you how many. He said do as much as you can with the empowerment that I'm giving you. You know? So... You know, he says this, and I'm like, okay, great. We're, we're, we're you know, I, I really felt by the Holy Ghost that I would do that. And, and then uh, I was actually not even planning that that day. That's not what I was planning. You know, I was, I was planning, you know, maybe a, a little trip to Europe. I've given my Europe money away two times already. <laughs> actually, three times. Every time I was going to go to Europe, one time it was right before COVID. And I failed kind of not to do it. And then we didn't go. We sold our money and then COVID hit. We would have been stuck in Europe for like years. And so the second time, the second time, you know, I'm just sitting with Pastor Ronnie and I mentioned, you know, uh, my friend, you know, he, he mentioned that, you know, this, this was a big crusade. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go spend some time in Europe and, and, and you know, I'm just going to go speak. Because I always run things by Pastor Rodney, anything that I'm going to do. You know, I'm not, I don't do anything on my own. I run things by him. He's like, Lino, I'm doing this. And he's like, huh, I don't think it's a good idea. He didn't, no, I said, no, I said, look, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And he said, you know, Europe is a little bit different now. You know, I don't know, maybe it's not, maybe not the best time. But he didn't tell that to me. He just told me what was happening out there. And I took it as, as I'm not going to do it because you don't need to tell me yes or not do it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand what you're telling me, you know, when you're like making a suggestion. You know, we want to make it all tell me yes. Everybody wants to be excited whenever the Lord told me to and they give him a yes. Oh, yes, I heard the Lord. What about when you're asking the question and it is a no? Still the Lord because he's, you know, he's really saving you from probably you going to hit your face against the wall. So yes is as powerful as a no when God speaks. So you need to be ready to hear yes or to hear no. Either way, God's going to make his plan and purpose in your life. Either way, you know. And so, you know, that I gave my money away. But this time around, I'm like, you know, I really felt the Holy Ghost because I have already made the right decisions. Because now I am not a man of opportunity. Now I am not looking to put myself in any position. Now I'm looking to, for the Holy Ghost to put me where he wants me to be. And now I know better. But until you don't learn to make those decisions on no, 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 you're not going to learn what the yes looks like. And everybody wants to hear yes, 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 yes. That's not how you learn how the yeses are. You actually learn when the no's are. You know, if you want to be blessed, you're not going to do this. If you're going to be blessed, you're going to do this. And so, you know, we got, you know, and I think, you know, he said it. And after he said, I really felt the Holy Ghost. By the way, when you hear the full Holy Ghost, you don't, you don't feel it out here. You feel it here. Okay. And if you're confused about it, it's probably you. You know, you feel a conviction in the Holy Ghost in your, in your spirit. And then if your mind is going crazy, it doesn't matter because if you feel peace, that's the Holy Ghost. You know, your mind could be, you know, doing backflips because it don't make sense. But when you feel peace, that's what it is, you know, because you're already under authority. You can never feel peace if you're not under authority, by the way. You could never. I'm not, I'm not running every single thing that I do under Pastor Rodney. I don't, or, or, or Pastor, no, I, or Pastor Alex. I don't, I don't do none of that stuff, you know? I know, I know by the Holy Ghost, and I know the word of God in my heart, and because I'm already a man under authority, they don't need to be reminded me that I'm making decisions under authority. I already act that way. So people are like going to find out whether they're making decisions under authority or not is because they have really not understood yet what being under authority really is. Uh, well, I said I would go and, and I mean, we're just talking and I'm like, okay, well, great. We're going to do that. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost that we're going to do that. And so, you know, it's, it's to do this. It's to go and, and do kingdom business. It's preach to the people this. This is what I'm going to go do out there. And so, you know, funny enough, we look at the dates. The dates are, you know, uh, June the 18th. And I'm like, okay, June the 18th, what day is that? And then and, uh, it's like, it's Father's Day. Okay, it's Father's Day. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It's Father's Day. And then I'm like, Father's Day? 
That's exactly six years ago with the day that I got touched. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, speaking in Germany. So a kingdom business of, of, of all nations. And it's exactly six days after the day that I got touched at the, at the river and my life changed forever. It was exactly six years after. It was Father's Day. It was June 18th. It was June 18th, and now I was, I was going to be there exactly at the same time preaching a, a everything. But now I was not the one being touched. I was the one being used to touch people. That's what God wants to do in your life. What he did for you, he'll raise you up so you can do for others. You know? And so, you know, God has already laid down a path for you. He has already laid down a path for you. And so I'm like, okay, bro, well, who, who, who are you going to have there? You know, I don't know, man. We're just, we're just putting some churches together. I know they do pretty big things, you know, because this organization do this stuff all the time. And I'm like, I don't really know. I'm like, you're actually going to take after Sunday service. And I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to have a few people. So uh, long story short, they're inviting people from, uh, inviting churches from Italy, from Switzerland, and Germany. And there are going to be business people from these three places that are going to come together and are going to hear this message for the first time. And maybe many of them are actually going to receive a confirmation of what the Lord already has been speaking to them about. Some will hear for the first time. For a lot of them, it might be a confirmation that actually will activate them. And to do what God has called him to do and really be part of the body of Christ. So that's going to be a great thing that is going to happen. And, you know, I see Tampa's excited. <laughs> Tampa is excited. Uh, you know, I see everybody being happy out there. I mean, even people driving in the cars are excited. Don't get too excited. Don't put your two hands up. You're going to crash. <laughs> Don't do that. But. You know, this is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to put an incentive out there. It's going to be, you know, quite great. You know, uh, you know, we have about three months before this happens. So, you know, you got to hit a certain amount of sales to be able to have a week off and half of your ticket paid off to go to Germany to serve out there. So come on, let's give it up. Now I hear some people, I'm like, oh, man, I can already tell how much sales are going to be. You need to be excited about something. You need to believe in something. Okay, you need to get your, 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 you know, your, your mind out of the way. You need to get your being so pessimistic and negative out of the way. You know, people need to just get rid of that mentality and just be excited for what God is doing. You know, God is doing. And so you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. Whatever is in front of you, you'll be able to do it, you know. And so obviously, you know, you know, we're going to have people that are going to hit it and we're going to have other people that, you know, are going to go to the next one because they didn't believe big enough. It's OK. Everybody's growing, you know, everybody's growing. But I believe that we're going to have the biggest production in the next three months for God's kingdom. Come on. Can you say amen? amen. So um, a few a few tips I want to give you before we, we wrap it up, you know. When, you, when God's taking you to new heights, there is a lot more people that come around you. So if you find something smarter than you, work with them. Don't compete with them. I'm going to say that again. If there is somebody smarter than you, do not compete with them. God did not put them there to compete with you. He put them to work with them so you can learn. You know, because people really get, you know, oh, man, you know, I'm the manager. But if you don't have the knowledge and the empowerment, you're going to be the manager of five people always, of three people always. You're not going to have growth. You know, in a lot of the conversations, I was actually having a very high end conversation, uh, not high end, very high, you know, uh, at a high level with, you know, with, you know, institutions that, you know, do what, how much is that 200 megawatts? It's probably like. $200 million, that project, $300 million, easy. So about 200, 300 million, 200 to 300 million dollar projects, right? Now I'm the one leading the conversation, but I immediately deviate to the one that has the better verbiage, the one that commun can communicate better. Why? So I can learn the way that he communicates. I may know the intricacy and I may have all the connections, but I want to hear what this guy has to say. And I, I mean, I mean, I have people all the time with me, so they, they you know, they know what I do. And so God does not put smarter people 
in your life or more prepared people so he can demote you or he can, you know, or you can compete with them. He's putting them there so you can work with them so you can go where God has called you to be. So you can grow. So you can have fast tracks. They might have 10 years of knowledge. You don't have those 10 years to put to learn all of that. But you have somebody that has all of this inside of them that is willingly giving it to you. And you're trying to compete. And you're trying to be stubborn. And you're trying to be prideful. You know, that's why people and churches get stuck. You know, because uh, God wants to empower us. God wants to empower us. So learn how to work with people that, are, that seem to be more capable. You might be light years ahead in the spiritual, but they might be light years ahead of the natural. And that's what the body of Christ needs today. You know, he brings people and then you can guide them in the direction that they should go while learning the 10, 20 years or actually decades of of wisdom that they have acquired on how to take over the world. And now you have the anointing and now you have the knowledge. My goodness, we're going to take over. We're going to take over. We are going to take over. So when God brings more capable people around you is not to compete with them, but it is to learn and to work with them. Because God wants to take you faster because you've been praying for breakthrough. Right? And so a lot of people have started to stone their breakthrough. What are you talking about? Work, be humble, learn. The only way to learn to be how to be a better representative of solar industries, actually getting over yourself and humbling yourself and learn the practical. Learn the practical. Learn how to apply the practical of your job. Become the best one at your job. If you understand that, you'll be able to do many things at a high level. If not, you'll be bad at everything that you do, and you're always going to be believing that the last offering you give is the, the, the one that is going to bring, bring you the breakthrough. God does not work that way. Okay? Is this good for everybody? Is this really learning? Are you guys really learning something good? My goodness. This has got to spark the fire up and stop being so. The next thing. The, stop being so the next thing I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Comfort and complacency, it is the worst addiction and a cheap ticket to depression. Because when you're comfortable, you're not thriving. You're not thriving anymore. You're not believing. You're not working. You're not anything. Whenever you're not activating your body, you immediately begin to lose the purpose. And whenever you lose the purpose, you get depressed. You get in the mindset where it's going to drown you of incapability and no action. You need to be active. You need to be doing something. For the love of the Lord, Pastor Rodney just travel all over the, you know, the last, you know, done 70 meetings straight. We have to be active doing the things that God has called you to do. We don't have time to sit under, you know, put our hands under our butt and sit down. We don't have time for that. We have to be activated. We have to be activated. And you have to be out of your comfort zone always. Always, if you're like comfortable with not making a sale every other week, it's going to get you down here. You're going to get beat down men mentally. You're going to get beat down mentally. If you're not going on there and you're working and if you get tired, rest a couple of five minutes and then get up and keep going. That's what you need to do. Comfort is the worst addiction. People get addiction to comfort because once they get to one level, they got to step back. They got to step back. They got to step back, you know. And so. You know, worse is, is really, you know, and it's a cheap ticket to depression. That's why people are depressed all the time because they're not working. They're not going. They're not, they're not willing to continue to go and learn and grow. I'm always learning. I've learned the most. We've hit probably over $55 million last year in revenue. Many few companies, maybe 5% of the companies in the world would ever get to do that. I have learned more in the last six months than I've learned my entire life. I'm learning. I'm learning. I've learned the most the last three months of the end of the year and the beginning of this three years that I've learned in the six years of being here. God, if you're willing, God's always going to show you. If you're hungry, he's going to continue to feed you. If you're thirsty, he's going to continue to give you water. You know, 
And so you have to get out of that. You have to get out of this, like, well, you know, I'm just sitting here, sitting here. You are doing it with the wrong perspective. You got to do it with a heavenly perspective, and then you're going to have never-ending energy to do what you do. Like I was speaking last week, you know, I was doing the exactly same thing. I was just now doing differently on orders with the right mentality. I humble myself. Number one, I recognize what I needed, and then I follow instructions of the master, and then everything changed. So that's the same thing with you. Can you say amen? Amen. Don't tell people more than they need to know. Respect the privacy that you have, and go only to the people, the God, that have solutions. Don't go just telling your business to everybody all the time. You know, that's how people end up getting three opinions and they end up making the wrong decision. You know? Keep your standards high. Don't settle for something just because it is available. Okay, this is very, very important. The family you created is more important than the family that you come from. Come on! The family that you create by Jesus, it is more important than the family that you come from. You can redefine your entire generation. You can redefine. You could be known the most blessed families in the land because you get to create your family with godly principles. You get to serve God. You get to live a godly life. You are the one that God has chosen to redefine your entire generation. Can you say amen? Amen. Can you say amen? Man, this is a good one. The family you create. Can you say amen? I need an organ here. (laughs) The family you create is better than the family that you come from. Come on. Can you say amen? Can I get a witness up in here? Come on. Come on. The family of Christ, that's who we are, where we come from. So don't just completely get rid of every mentality of where I came from and my mom and my dad. I have a father that owns a thousand cattle on a hill. Come on. He's the owner of heaven and earth. Everything is his. Everything is his. My goodness, what a blessing. And the last one, and the last one, which is amazing, is train yourself to take nothing personally. Save yourself from 99% of your mental problems. Don't take things personally. Let us lie. Create a thick skin. Whatever. You know, don't take things personally ever. Because at the end of the day, whatever that is happening to you, there's always a solution. And if they're doing anything uh, or anything is happening to you because of the kingdom of heaven, they are doing it to the Lord, not to you. You're just his representative, you know. It's just like if somebody has something against the king, then I'm just his representative, bro. That's him. Don't take it personally, okay? Don't take things personally, you know. Learn how to let go, forgive, move on, learn. You never fail if you're... You never fail, you always learn. You never fail, you always learn. The only way that you fail is if you blame others for your actions. Because then you'll never find the learning lesson of growth in what you're doing. And with that, I'll tell you, this is one of the most empowerment encouraging meetings for myself you know i know god's doing great things uh we're excited about what god is doing is this good was this good for everybody my goodness i'm just so thankful of after playing four hours of baseball you know and playing at the major league you know level you know (laughs) <laughs> with Daco, we got some major league baseball players yesterday playing in my team so as far as I think I was at the highest level <laughs> everything I pitched it looked like it was 100 miles an hour even if it was 10 miles an hour 
You know, I wish we, I wish we would record ourselves. We look, move a lot slower than we think in our head we move, you know. We're like, flash, I'm going so fast. <laughs> I'm flash, bro. I'm running. I'm going. I'm like, I'm so fast. And you're like, in slow motion. You know? Everybody's just standing waiting for you. Bro, if we tell them something, we're not getting a paycheck, bro. So don't say anything. <laughs> if we critique the bus running, bro, just, you ain't getting a paycheck. Shut up, bro. Yeah, man, you're going so fast, Miguel. Wow, I'm so proud of you. Everybody's scared of their paycheck. Don't worry. I'm not going to take it personally. You just get fine, you know, that's it. <laughs> but my goodness, it, it, you know, and then stay active. One of the things that we do, and I, this goes for the entire company, like our hangouts, obviously, are always sitting and eating somewhere. We're going to change that. We're going to do some activities, you know. We're going to get people moving. Come on. Come on. We're going to do some activities. Don't be just sitting and eating and just preaching to the people. Get up and do something, you know. We play four hours of baseball and then probably 50 minutes of soccer for me because then I was done, you know. I'm pretty good, man. A guy was like, oh, you know, I almost broke his hip and mine. <laughs> and, and a play that I did, I almost broke his hip and then mine. I'm like, oh, dang. I need to, I'm, I'm young. I'm young, guys. I mean, I mean, you see me over here. People fail to know that I'm an athlete. At heart, I am an athlete. <laughs> You know, but yeah, don't be sitting down and just talking to your people where you eat pizza. Get your fat butt out of the chair and go do some some exercises. I mean, I've been telling this to my guys every time. I'm like, bro, we're going to go do something. And I'm like, and I'm like, bro, we're going to go play something today. Somebody's going to sweat today. So go do some 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 exercise. Come on. We all need it. Right. That gets your mind going. That gets your mind going. Not me like, oh, you know, I'm just my version of hanging out is sitting down on the couch with three plates of food and then talking to the guys. Get yourself out. Go for a walk. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates would do business while they would go on a two-hour walk. And then we got the keys of the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, I got it over here with my, you know, my plate of food, with my encouragement, with my code, with my empowerment. No, bro, we got to do things in the natural, you know? And so that's why we're going to have a kickball tournament at the closest retreat. Come on, a kickball tournament. We're going to have a kickball tournament, and we're going to start doing more activities. I figure it's a lot cheaper to take people to play at a park to go feed them at, you know, a steakhouse. So we're going to do that. My goodness, I'm going to save so much in the budget, bro. My goodness. More shoes for me. I mean, for, more shoes for you. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm excited about this one i'm like three thousand dollar meal free park and a bowl uh, let's exercise <laughs> still take you out to eat you know it's all right you know it'll be fun we'll go eat after we work out you know but you know let's begin to do things that are you know activities is going to get you going you know you're like, oh, like, ah, it's my job, my manager. No, just go for a walk. Go sweat a little bit. You're going to feel good about yourself. You know, you're going to be like, man, I'm, I still got it, even though you're in slow motion, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm pretty fast still, I mean, according to me. <laughs> according to my mind, according to my recollection, you know, I love sports. I love sports. People that are successful in businesses, they understand the principles of sports. And if you never play sports in your life, it, it's time to do it. You know, go, go, you know, play domino or something like that. You know, <laughs> play chess. No, get out. Break a good sweat. You know, I, uh, you know, I sweat every week by being up here, by the way. I mean, I'm, I'm drenched after I'm done. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making an activity to sweat every time. And, and you know. And you don't have to be a gym rat or anything. Just go for a walk, you know. Go to a park with your kids, with your loved ones, you know, because then people begin to be like, oh, let's get together. They begin little weird groups of girls going out there and, and working out. Don't do that. That's just fleshly, okay? Like you want to go to the gym and you're like, no, let me make a group of the girls that you're working with and go out there, you know. That was for someone that was already thinking to do that, that very thing. So they can go and be prideful in the gym and uh, look at me. Don't do that, okay? 
That's not what we're going to do. That's not what God brought you here to do. You're over that stuff. Go walk with your family, play with your kids, the people you're mentoring win with. Just don't go and do activities just because you want to be looked at. And that goes more for some girls, okay? And the guys too, you know, don't be too much into yourself, you know? Don't try to get attention to yourself. Stop doing that stuff. Ladies, gentlemen, don't try to bring attention to yourself. You know, don't do that. Go work out, you know, talk with somebody to build them up, you know. You know, at the end of the day, you know, doing muscles profits little, but still profits a little. So, you know, get that a little bit of profit, you know. That's what the word about says. It says that, you know, working out is profits very little. But I'm saying to be inactive, you know. To be active, go for a walk, so go build something with your family. Before it's not, it's not an opportunity for you to go to your gym and just like, oh, you know, I'm there at 12 o'clock at night, midnight, working out by myself. That's dumb. That's dumb. Don't do that stuff. Okay? Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear that? Great, 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 great. You know, uh, it's good. It's good. And and also, we're gonna bring all the closers to uh, all the closers and all the field marketers to the retreat. Come on. All the field marketers are coming to the retreat. Oh, it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great, uh, you know. But, you know, it's, it's such a blessing that we could do all of these things. You know, we're going to have the greatest year we've ever had. Come on, can you say amen? amen. This is a wonderful year to be righteous. Come on, can you say Amen. Come on, it's a wonderful year for the righteous. Come on. That's, that's really what, what, what's coming. It's a great year for the righteous. And so, you know, let's, let's get everybody out there. Let's get, you know, go do something with your guys, you know. Go fishing with your guys, you know. If you're not the fishing kind, if, if you're going to sink the canoe, maybe do it from a, bri- from a bridge. You know, don't jump on a canoe. Maybe do it from a bridge. Go fishing from a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we have a company that is unoffendable. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, you know, we, we, we're unoffendable. It's just so wonderful. Jesus loves you regardless. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a good, good idea. You know, we're, we're changing things all the way, you know. You know, yesterday, I think, you know, uh, Christy asked me, what was the, fun, the best part of your day? I said, it was playing baseball with the guys. That was my best part. The best part of the day was just, because actually that's how you begin to build teams. That's how you begin to create another level of unity, you know? And so if, if you are feeling that there is no connection, it's because you're not having activities with your people. You know, you need to have activities that are outside of you just yelling at them of why they didn't make a sale, you know? Or Joe's telling them, push through. And I'm like, go push through while you play basketball. Go laugh. Go, you know, play some ball. Kick the ball. Go for a walk. Have constructive conversations. You know, lift each other up. Talk about what God's doing around the world. Talk, talk about the revivals that God is doing. Talk about how amazing is what the river Tampa Bay is doing. My goodness, you're faithful with somebody else's vision. God will not only give you yours, but he'll, he'll have all the people that will come rally behind you, you know. And so that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the success that, you know, that, you know, our men of God has, Pastor Rodney. I'm talking about all the great things that are happening in Fort Myers, you know. You know, with Pastor, with Pastor Daniel, you know, with Pastor Corey here at Pure Church. My goodness, they're doing big things here, you know. And so you will always begin to celebrate what other people are doing. And then God will give you what you celebrate happens to you, Okay. So begin to be like that, and obviously focus and put, put your, your head down and, and build something. Build what's been given into your hands. Build it. Build it. Build it with passion. Build it with love. Build it with the fruits of the Spirit. Build it with covenant, with unity, understanding, submission to authority, and honor. That's, that's a wonderful thing to, to teach people. And so, you know, with that being said, you know, let's just pray for everybody. If you can stand up, if you can stand up. And, uh, you know, let's just lift your hands. I'm going to pray really quick. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your power, Father, would touch every single person. Father, that what they, what they receive today, Father, will be a seed that will grow in their hearts, Father, and that we will produce fruit 101%, Father, that we would be faithful with what you're with trust in our hands. I speak a blessing. 
a blessing, an abundant blessing as they put their hand to the plow, Father, as they renew their heart. I speak the Holy Ghost, Father, over their life. Clear minds, clear hearts, Father. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that people will receive the joy of their salvation, that they'll receive peace, Father, peace that you can give, only you can give, Father, and that the power of the risen Christ that is in every single one of them will be activated to reach the end time harvest and to receive the exceedingly abundantly more than you can have for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray protection. I pray no sickness and disease. I pray no lack and no poverty, but I pray all of the blessings of heaven of what Jesus paid on the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. amen. Come on. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Good to see you. Let's have a great week. Let's have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Masterclass podcast. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe for updates and all future content. For more information about Pastor Mike and Kingdom Masterclass, visit podcast.z5info.com.